This is Seymour Rocks, reporting from Down Under. I want to talk about the extreme weather in uh, North America at the moment, although from six and a half thousand miles away, I doubt that I can do it. Uh, damage, uh, sorry, uh, uh, justice. Um, but hopefully I can provide a little bit of context which is missing from the news reports. So I'm going to go uh, straight away to a video that's just come up in the last uh, few hours. So. Dozens of rivers and streams are overflowing their banks in the upper Midwest and Gulf Coast as the regions deal with rainfall measured in feet, not inches. In the last two weeks, 15 to 20 inches of rain has fallen in the heartland with all of the stormy weather. The threat for tornadoes will lessen in most of the country after over 400 reported in the last two weeks, but the flood risk increases as the water begins to drain from two weeks of heavy rain. Several levees are beginning to fail and some already failed, including a breach in Dardanelle, Arkansas, Friday morning. Officials are evacuating 160 homes ahead of incoming water. West of Kansas City, a dam near Sebecha, Kansas, could fail in the next couple of days with all the runoff water. The good news for now is that there is not a lot of rain expected in the central U.S. over the next few days. The severe storms on Friday will be in the Carolinas, Great Lakes and western Texas. The tornado threat is small, but gusty winds and some hail are possible. There is some bad news, as a new storm system will bring more rain early next week for the southern plains. Some areas could see up to four inches of rain in the flood zone. Okay. So, uh, we'll go back to... Shin, she uh, said, uh, no words, my heart breaks for Virginia Beach. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is just, uh, I think this is the latest uh, uh, headline that's come out uh, just in the last couple of hours or so. And what I notice is that all these reports, or most of them seem to be either from alternative media or from uh, local uh, or regional media. So this one is saying uh, levy breach along Arkansas River forcing uh, residents to evacuate. Uh, flash flood warnings and evacuations were issued for rural areas on the western Arkansas Friday after a levee was breached along the Arkansas River. It occurred at Dardanelle, approximately 60 miles northwest of Little Rock, as reported by officials. The breach was forecasted, prompting Yell County officials and emergency managers to go door to door, urging residents to evacuate Thursday ahead of the breach. So let's just look at some of the, uh, the headlines. Uh, now, isn't it really strange that uh, some of the most uh, detailed reporting on this actually comes from a um, a, a newspaper, the Daily Mail, in in in, in Britain. Um, yeah, since uh, I've been doing this blog of mine for eight years. When I first started, whenever we had uh, extreme weather events, uh, the mantra would be uh, weather and climate are two different things. So it's not indicative of anything because climate change was so, so far off into the distance um, that, you know, uh, extreme weather events had nothing to do with climate change. Um, but of course, I think the the uh, narrative has changed, um, and it's hard to escape the conclusion. Even though, um, really, when it comes to events like this, <coughs> they tend to get largely ignored. So, uh, and this puts a little bit of context. This is from a few days ago. This is from the. 28th, uh, every single county in Oklahoma is under a state of emergency. Uh, and this, uh, yeah, now we uh, come to um, 
how the media covers it. So this is from today. This is uh, what uh, USA thinks is important. Um, they ignore kind of the, the situation on the ground within the United States and they uh, concentrate on uh, Trump's uh, tariffs on, on Mexico and what this might, how this will affect what you pay for vegetables and cars. Well, I would say that this is pretty small bickies compared with what's uh, about to come. Uh, you know, corn and soy and wheat, uh, they go through the whole uh, food chain. So they're going to affect everything. And uh, let's have a look. This is, this is what Fox thinks is, is important. Uh, from the West. Oh God, I'm not even going to read them out. I'm just going to leave this up for a, a few seconds so you can see for yourself. I don't see anything here in their headlines about um, about this weather event. And, you know, these front pages of websites are like newspapers. Uh, this is kind of really what you expect to see on the front page of a newspaper if it's relegated to a small segment on page four, then it's being de-emphasized. And the Huffington Post, you think, oh yeah, they're really into climate change, they're liberals, and like, what are they talking about? Uh, 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 can't see anything about floods or anything here. Oh well, go on. And CNN. Um, yeah, right. Well, it's all about Trump, of course. Every every day it's all about Trump. Um, and we've got walking tours in Amsterdam's red light district. Um, abortions. Uh, Fact-checking North Korea. Uh, even in the uh, small print here, I can't see anything relating to floods or farmers or anything. Uh, and, of course, this is what CNN have been uh, emphasizing. Um, Rural America feels the sting of Trump's China trade war. Well, I've got no uh, reason to doubt that uh, this is actually a double whammy because uh, they're not only having to deal with these disastrous floods, um, but they also have uh, the trade war with China and uh, I don't think any of this is going in a very good direction. Um, <coughs> I woke up <coughs> this morning um, and, oh, well, I actually went to bed with the Al uh, some of the headlines on the Alberta f uh, wildfires. <coughs> um, and this is on uh, um, agenda-free television, um, and he covered it for a whole hour. Um, he does a pretty good job, and in the meantime, I went looking at the uh, Canadian media, media, and of course, all I know about the Canadian Canadian media, it, it really is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So that's where I went to have a look. Um, at that stage, there was absolutely nothing. They've actually uh, corrected it very late in the day. I'll probably come to that, but this. Most of the stuff seems to be from either secondary news sources. Um, I know a few names, uh, but I don't know these ones. So this is this is this must be an Alberta paper because it's giving quite a lot of coverage. Extreme fire conditions continue to challenge firefighters. Slave Lake rem remains on evacuation uh, alert. Wabaska re rescue uh, residents res rescued. Uh, evacuated. Um, so yeah, so that's that's obviously not the C, uh, the CBC. That's some sort of um, um, local news. And um, yeah, here goes another one. This is uh, another headline: estimated ten thousand people evacuated as multiple fires threaten northern Alberta communities. Well, that's come out. Uh, 
just really in the last few hours, the spit about uh, 10,000 people evacuated. I'll leave links below so that you can read the articles in greater detail. Um, and then here we are across Alberta, BC, Northern Ontario, thousands displaced as wildfires rage. This fire is going to be a tough one. Alberta's forestry ministry says his fire season starts early. And, of course, uh, what could be more, um, well, symbolic, really, just as these fires rage, um, the, uh, the uh, uh, what does he call himself, the, the, the prime minister or whatever, the, you know, the head of the Alberta government has announced that um, the carbon tax has been revealed. So, well, I'm not certain that the carbon tax is going to do much in uh, this uh, period of time, uh, but it's deeply symbolic of the sociopaths that, uh, that rule us and the media, which doesn't even talk, talk about it. Uh, in the meantime, there are... Other things are uh, going on. Um, a heat breaking, record breaking heat in Alaska wreaks havoc on communities and ecosystems. Abnormally high temperatures have led to unsafe travel conditions, uncertain ecological futures, and even multiple deaths. And uh, this is in Southern California. But Northern California seems to be having massive flooding. Um, the Oroville Dam seems still seems to be under under threat uh, from rising waters, uh, from massive rains and a melting uh, snowpack. Um, so this is from Southern California. Wednesday's brush fires in South, Southern San Diego County could be an ominous sign of what's to come this summer. So. That brings me on to really kind of the main context of this. And this was a tweet that I pick up yesterday. The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced that 58% of U.S. corn crop has been planted as of May 26, compared to the five-year average pace of 90%. This is the slowest pace in recorded history. Um, now... That brings me to, um, let me see, uh, okay, um, this article was really, really interesting yesterday, um, and you won't find any of this in the mass media. Farmers are using Twitter to document the disastrous effects of climate change on crops. A terrible wet planting season is threatening U.S. crops, and farmers are live tweeting it. In case we need any more evidence that the globe is disastrously warmed, a pattern of conditions is impacting the world's agricultural systems and threatening food supplies in the U.S. and abroad. Nothing's been said about it, or very little, because legislators will continue to deny uh, what's really happening before their eyes? <coughs> Climate change, anybody? U.S. farmers have now turned to the Twitter hashtag NoPlant19 to bring attention to the extremely wet spring that's made it difficult to plant corn and soybeans. So the U.S. is currently in the midst of its wettest 12 months on record with regions of the Great Plains and Midwest where much of the nation's corn and soy is produced, bearing the brunt of this spring's rainfall. Not only are homes being damaged as a result of the extreme flooding, but the conditions are making it damn near impossible for farmers to plant their crops. Uh, so it goes through some of the information that we know on average over the past four years, farmers in the states that represent a majority of the nation's harvest would have planted 90% of their corn and 66% of their soy by May the 26th, according to USDA report. Uh, that makes a lot of sense since crop yields 
tend to decline when corn is planted after May the 10th, and we're on the 1st of June. And farmers typically wrap up their planting efforts by the 31st of May. However, 2019's crops are far behind schedule. As of May the 26th, only 58% of the nation's corn had been planted and just 29% of its soy. Farmers are rightly worried and consumers should be too. Crop shortages will likely result in higher prices for consumers and since corn and soy are basically in every part of the American diet, that could be a real problem. So here go a few of the, uh, the tweets. And let's just, let's just see if we can play this. Well, yeah, that paints a picture, and he uh, says, I, I was getting worried it hadn't rained in 15 minutes or so. Anyway, uh, yeah, and then the whole issue is, of course, uh, compounded by the Trump administration's trade war retaliatory tariffs between China and the US have made it difficult to sell soy on the international market. As a result, many farmers plan to grow more corn this year. UPI report some farmers may cut their losses and turn to insurance if they're unable to plant. However, those same people would then face challenges in qualifying for a federal government aid package designed to ease financial strain from the US-China trade war and because it requires that they plant uh, crops. And I don't see Trump being very um, uh, sympathetic to... Uh, uh, these conditions which are created by man-made climate change. Um, that layer of stress on the agricultural industry is only intensified when you zoom out to the international level where farmers around the world are facing dire situations. As one North Dakota farmer and Twitter user, Jordan Gackle, pointed out in a recent threat, drought is continuing to disrupt wheat crops in Australia, remember? Forcing the country to import some of its wheat from Canada. Meanwhile, Canada, uh, as of a week or so, the eastern part of Canada just hadn't uh, done any plantings at all. Some farmers in Canada are now reporting long stretches without rain under the hashtag drought19. Head over to China and you'll find the legion of fall army worms are spreading rapidly and devouring key grain crops. And then, of course, we've got the um, uh, the swarms of locusts in various parts of the world, in the Middle East and southern Russia and the like. So the various international agricultural crises pa paint a dire picture which is made so much worse by the climate deniers, denial by politicians who would rather invent a fake war against burgers than take profound policy action, as if profound policy action was even possible now. If hashtags are the only thing standing between the world and food shortages, everyone better start tweeting. Well, yeah, that 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 really says it. So I went and had a look, and this is on Twitter. There's a whole um, hashtag here, so it really you know, goes down. This shows um, the uh, levels of planting. It by, by, by state compared with the normal and that doesn't really paint a very um, a very um, happy picture so that goes on and in addition to that there are also um, other hashtags as uh, drought 19 and corn so if you go on to um, Twitter you could go and have a look at those as well. Um, so there's a whole picture here uh, that does not bode well for anywhere in the world uh, and the media 
no media anywhere is really talking about it. Um, certainly they're not giving the context. Anyway, uh, I think that's enough on that one from me. Uh, this is uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.